On July 16, 1969, the world focused on Kennedy Space Center, a Saturn V launched carrying three men that would immortalize themselves in human history. Two of the three men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin, became the first humans to step foot on another celestial body, whilst Michael Collins, isolated from everyone that has ever lived and ever will, drifted silently, waiting anxiously for his colleagues to attempt to reconnect with him to make the longest journey home. The moon landing is commonly seen as the pinnacle of human endeavor. Three men, representing thousands of years of evolution and humankind's endeavors, carried the world past, present, and future on their shoulders. This is the bright story etched into human history. But the danger that came with a high-risk mission to put the first man on the moon led to much darker events. Discover 10 dark truths about the moon landing. 1. The president was prepared for their deaths. The attempt to land on the moon was so risky that President Nixon's speechwriter, William Sapphire, had prepared in event of moon disaster for the president to read to a global audience on television in the event the Apollo 11 astronauts were stranded on the moon. The remarkable document reveals a dark parallel timeline for world history in which the reality of a slow death on the moon would have been poetically written as an achievement for mankind. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery, but they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. These two men are laying down their lives in mankind's most noble goal, the search for truth and understanding. They will be mourned by their family and friends. They will be mourned by their nation. They will be mourned by the people of the world. They will be mourned by a Mother Earth that dared send two of her sons into the unknown. In their exploration, they stirred the people of the world to feel as one. In their sacrifice, they bind more tightly the Brotherhood of Man. In ancient days, men looked at stars and saw their heroes in the constellations. In modern times, we do much the same. But our heroes are epic men of flesh and blood. Others will follow and surely find their way home. Man's search will not be denied, but these men were the first, and they will remain the foremost in our hearts. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. The contingency plan from Sapphire suggested a protocol the administration might follow in reaction to such an event. According to the plan, Mission Control would close down communications with the lunar module, and a clergyman would commend their souls to the deepest of the deep in a public ritual likened to burial at sea. Two. Buzz Aldrin was furious not being first man on the moon. During the first press conference after the Apollo 11 crew was announced, the first questioner a porter asked was, which one of you gentlemen will be the first man to step on the lunar surface? They were told by NASA it had not been decided, and Armstrong added that it was not based on individual desire. One of the first versions of the egress checklist had the lunar module pilot, therefore Aldrin, exit the spacecraft before the command module pilot, which matched what had been done in previous missions. The commander had never performed the spacewalk. Reporters wrote in early 1969 that Aldrin would be the first to walk on the moon, and NASA told reporters he would be the first as well. Multiple factors contributed to a change of decision, including the physical positioning of the astronauts within the compact lunar lander, which made it easier for Armstrong to be the first to exit the spacecraft. 
The crew tried a simulation in which Aldrin left the spacecraft first, but he damaged the simulator while attempting to egress. This was enough for mission planners to make their decision. Perhaps this could have been overcome, but in any event, a separate NASA management group meeting is said to have occurred that made sure Aldrin would not be the first to walk on the moon. The group argued that the first person to walk on the moon should be like Charles Lindbergh, a calm and quiet person who didn't have a large ego, which says a lot about how NASA viewed their characters and thought each of them would handle the demands of public life in the years following the mission. They made the decision to change the flight plan so the commander was the first to egress from the spacecraft. When Aldrin learned that this might be amended to favor Armstrong, he was furious. Aldrin agitated NASA for the original procedure to be followed and attempted to persuade other lunar module pilots he should be first, but they responded cynically about what they perceived as a lobbying campaign. Attempting to stem interdepartmental conflict, Aldrin was told that Armstrong would be first since he was the commander. Armstrong was told by NASA management that the plan was to have him leave the spacecraft first if he agreed. Armstrong said, yes, that's the way to do it. The decision was announced in a press conference on April 14, 1969. The media accused Armstrong of exercising his commander's prerogative to exit the spacecraft first. Michael Collins has commented that he thought Aldrin resents not being first on the moon more than he appreciates being second. Was the first to step on the surface. It could be because he was the mission commander and in our armed services, leaders are always at the front of their men. But it could also be because he was closer to the door. <laughs> Three, the lunar module could have exploded. As soon as Buzz Aldrin said, contact light, Armstrong was supposed to immediately shut down the engine. As the engineers suspected the pressure caused by the engine's own exhaust reflecting off the lunar surface could make it explode. But probably wrapped up in a mix of stress and emotion with unexpected warning alarms acting as a distraction, he forgot. Three seconds later, the Eagle lunar module landed and Armstrong shut down the engine. Thankfully, it didn't blow up and Richard Nixon wasn't given an opportunity to read his substitute speech. Four, man's first words on the moon aren't what you think. The first words spoken on the moon weren't so monumental. In fact, they weren't even uttered for mankind by Neil Armstrong at all, but by Buzz Aldrin. A few moments before the landing, a light informed Aldrin that at least one of the 67-inch, 170-centimeter probes hanging from the Eagle's foot pads had touched the surface, and he said, contact light, okay, engine stop, ACA, out of the tent. Instead of this uninspiring astronomical technical jargon, it's probably a good thing for the world that we remember Neil Armstrong's more thrilling delivery, don't you think? But even he said the routine sentence in reply to Aldrin, engine arm is off, before he uttered his etched in your mind words, Houston, tranquility base here, the eagle has landed. 5. Buzz Aldrin took communion on the moon. Once they had landed and completed technical formalities, Buzz Aldrin radioed Earth to announce, This is the LM pilot. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask every person listening in, whoever and wherever they may be, to pause for a moment and contemplate the events of the past few hours and to give thanks in his or her own way. He then took communion secretly in private, 
At this time, NASA was still fighting a lawsuit brought by the atheist Madeleine Murray O'Hare, who had objected to the Apollo 8 crew reading from the Book of Genesis, demanding that their astronauts refrain from broadcasting religious activities while in space. As such, Aldrin chose to refrain from directly mentioning taking communion on the moon. Aldrin was an elder at the Webster Presbyterian Church, and his communion kit was prepared by the pastor of the church, Dean Woodruff. In 1970, he commented, It was interesting to think that the first ever liquid ever poured on the moon and the first food eaten there were communion elements. On reflection in his 2009 book, Aldrin felt that perhaps if I had it to do over again, I would not choose to celebrate communion. Although it was a deeply meaningful experience for me, it was a Christian sacrament, and we had come to the moon in the name of all mankind, be they Christians, Jews, Muslims, animists, agnostics, or atheists. But at the time, I could think of no better way to acknowledge the enormity of the Apollo 11 experience than by giving thanks to God. 6. Neil Armstrong didn't say, that's one small step for man. His famous words have been repeated in documentaries and in classrooms for decades. But Armstrong intended to say, that's one small step for a man. Except the word a is not audible in the transmission, and thus was not initially reported by most observers of the live broadcast. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. When later asked about his quote, Armstrong said he believed, he said, for a man. And subsequent printed versions of the quote included the a ah, in square brackets. One explanation for the absence may be that his accent caused him to slur the words for a ah, together. Another is the intermittent nature of the audio and video links to Earth partly because of storms near Park's observatory. More recent digital analysis of the tape claims to reveal the A ah may have been spoken but obscured by static. If you're interested to discover more about the controversy surrounding what Neil Armstrong actually said with his One Small Step speech on the moon, there is a link on screen now. 7. Planting the flag was a nightmare. The astronauts planted the lunar flag assembly containing a flag of the United States on the lunar surface, in clear view of the TV camera. Aldrin remembered, Of all the jobs I had to do on the moon, the one I wanted to go the smoothest was the flag raising. But the astronauts struggled with the telescoping rod and could only jam the pole a couple of inches, five centimeters, into the hard lunar surface. I hope you're watching uh, how hard I have to hit this into the ground, Houston. Despite a layer of soft, slippery dust, the rock beneath was pretty tough. Aldrin was afraid it might topple in front of TV viewers, but he gave a crisp West Point salute. The flag was later blown over, or possibly burnt to a crisp, by the lunar module ascent engine exhaust. 8. They dumped a lot of trash on the moon. After transferring to Lunar Module Life Support, Armstrong and Aldrin lightened the ascent stage for the return to lunar orbit by tossing out their backpacks, lunar overshoes, an empty camera and other equipment before closing the hatch. They understandably left behind symbolic items such as the American flag, an olive branch, goodwill message disc and a mission patch but the amount of equipment and trash left behind by the crew is astonishing. If you take a look at the list NASA keeps of man-made items left behind on the moon by the Apollo missions, you won't think it's so much a sea of tranquility as a junkyard. Even the Eagle lunar module is still there, somewhere, having been jettisoned into the moon's orbit and eventually impacting on its surface. I guess one man's trash is another man's historic artifact. 9. A felt-tip pen 
saved the astronauts' lives. While moving inside the lunar module cabin, Aldrin accidentally damaged the circuit breaker that would arm the main engine for lift from the moon. There was a concern this would prevent firing the engine, stranding them on the moon. But luckily, a felt-tip pen was sufficient to activate the switch and saving a lot of technical headaches for people back on Earth. 10. NASA had the astronauts quarantined on Earth for fear of extraterrestrial exposure. The astronauts and their cargo of moon rocks began the process of recovery from the Columbia command module following splashdown. Divers passed biological isolation garments to the astronauts and assisted them into the life raft. NASA thought that the possibility of bringing back pathogens from the lunar surface was small, but were concerned enough to take precautions by dousing the astronauts and Columbia with chemicals to remove any remaining lunar dust. In accordance with the extraterrestrial exposure law put into force for the first lunar missions, quarantining of astronauts was mandatory to prepare for the remote possibility that they are harboring unknown lunar organisms that might endanger life on Earth. On board the aircraft carrier USS Hornet, the astronauts were placed in a mobile quarantine facility where they began the Earth-based portion of 21 days of quarantine and eventually released with a clean bill of health. This practice also continued for two more Apollo missions, Apollo 12 and Apollo 14 before the moon was proven to be barren of life.